It's the fastest adoption of disruptive technology in the history of human communication. Radio took 38 years to reach 50 million people. TV took 13 years. But mobile took only seven years to reach 1.4 billion people. Now, how many of you are sick of hearing about the shift to mobile? It's OK to admit it. I'm almost sick of it, right? OK, good. Well, it's only Monday, so prepare yourself. You've got to kind of pace yourself. It's a marathon. It's not a sprint. We don't like droning on and on about it either, but we kind of have to until the advertising industry, our attention and our spending habits align with this reality. Because in the US, the mobile, mobile accounts for only 25% of consumer, it accounts for 25% of consumer media time, but only 16% of ad spend. We all need to pick up the pace to catch up with where the world already is and not look for them where they once were. But how? There's so much change that's happening so quickly, it's hard to know how to shift our business practices. But one thing is for sure, it's not just about buying different kind of media, although obviously based on that stat, we all need to light a fire under that ASAP. There's another critical thing that we need to do in order to be on the right side of this shift. Because designing in the age of mobile is qualitatively different than in, tr in traditional media. Now I want to show you something. Because if a picture's worth a 1,000 words, a video is worth a billion plus. This is a visualization of all the mobile phones connected to mobile networks from the year 1992 to the present day. And this is just amazing. I think it's astonishingly beautiful as well. But what really takes my breath away in this visualization is the knowledge that every single point of light on this globe is an individual human being being connected to the rest of the world, often for the very first time. And that is ultimately what makes this not just a shift, but a tectonic disruption. So I want everyone in the room who has a mobile device with them to raise their hands, right? Almost everybody. Now, keep your hands up. What about two devices? Anyone with three? Well, that is strong. <laughs> now, OK, I want everyone in the room to raise their hand if they brought their television with them. And if you use your mobile phone as your TV, that does not count. OK. Our relationship with mobile devices is qualitatively different than traditional media, TV, print, et cetera. These mobile devices are not static appliances that sit on our wall or lay in stacks on our coffee tables. They help us work and play and connect with our colleagues, friends, and families every day, many, many times a day. There's more computing power in these little machines than the computers that got us to the moon. They are hyper-personalized, multi-purpose power tools. And we carry them around with us right inside of our pockets. It's incredible. And as designers and marketers and business people, we can never forget this because it is an incredibly privileged place to be. We can never take it for granted. And in fact, every day, we have to ask ourselves, how can we earn the right to live inside of people's pockets? In a sense, we need to ask ourselves, what is our halibut hook? That elegant solution that establishes balance between the short and the long term, that shows respect to the people that we want to connect with to make sure that more fish come back the next year. This is the heart of the value exchange. Now, in August of this year, Facebook hit a really exciting milestone. For the first time ever, on a single day, a billion people used Facebook. And every one of those people provides us with incredible value because we learn so much from them about how they're bringing mobility into their lives. And if we want people to continue and to invest their time and their attention and their trust with us, we need to continuously provide a ton of value back to them. And this is true for you, our business partners. We need to get so much value to you that you come back again and again. So to that end today, I want to share with you some of the things that we've learned about designing for large global mobile community. Three key lessons that you can add to your own uh, ex expertise in digital advertising and to help your organizations keep pace with the people of the world. Now, some of this you may already know, some may be new, but I hope in the end it will give you some, a new lens to look through your work when you get back to work after ad age is all said and done. Now, the first critical lesson is that we must design for people where they are. 
The U.S. is only 3% of the world population, but it dominates the tech and design conversations and standards. And there's a real danger in this. We can project our own experience on all the people of the world who live and work in very diverse contexts. There's a real opportunity to break into new markets and connect with new communities, and it's exciting for marketers. But we're only going to succeed if we take into account the kinds of devices and connections that people have access to. Now, this is what Google and Facebook and YouTube look like to most people around the world. 58% of the world's population use basic feature phones like these. Understanding how to design for these devices is critical to reaching a huge percentage of the world population. Now, smartphone adoption is increasing, but even so, most communities don't have reliable access to 4G networks the way that we are used to in the US. Now, check out this visualization. There's no global map for network connectivity, but Facebook login data is actually a pretty good proxy. And what you see here in yellow is the 4G connections all around the world, mostly in, in yellow, mostly U, uh, US, uh, Northern Europe, Japan, South Korea. 3G is in blue, you see that scattered about. But all of the red is places where the average is a 2G connection. And by the way, the dark land areas, that's where there are no connections at all. Now, it's going to take years for the reality of this map to shift significantly in many areas of the world. The other issue for a lot of people is that the cost of data plans is a big barrier. Now, these communities tend to be hyper aware of data usage, and they find all kinds of ways to minimize the impact of their phone usage on their data plans. Now, there's a fascinating hack in many of these communities that have developed. It's around the phenomenon of missed calls. Now, a missed call is when I take my phone and I call you and I immediately hang up, and you know that I'm just basically saying hi, and it's of no charge to me and the missed call gets logged on the recipient's phone, and, there, and there's no charges involved. Now, over the past few years, communities where this missed calls are, are common have developed a whole, whole system of communication, almost like a modern-day Morse code. In Syria, five missed calls in rapid succession mean, I'm online, let's chat. In Bhutan, farmers know how much milk a specific customer wants by the number of missed calls they receive. In India, a missed call from a business or a shop means your order is ready. 